Now that we've studied the properties in the interior metal of the conductor, let's look at what happens on the boundaries of the conductor. So again, we'll draw our conductor. We know that E is zero. And the first thing that we want to imagine is what would happen if we put a plus charge Q on the outside of the conductor. Well, we know that in principle, this charge is producing some fields. And the charge carriers in the conductor will be a, feel an attractive electric force. So what we would expect to see is negative charges on the surface of the conductor. And we would expect these field lines to bend to end on these charges. Now, what's happening is what we have here is something that we'll call an induced surface charge density on this conductor. And what is the result of these free electrons that have moved over here? If this field is producing an electric field that in the interior of the conductor, let's call this E inside, the field on the inside of the conductor, E inside, is equal to, and let's refer to this as an external field. So this is external. So it's equal to the external field, of the, which is just the field of a point charge, plus the field of the induced charges. And inside the metal, these two fields have to add up to zero. And so what's happening is this induced charge distribution is producing exactly the type of field to cancel the plus field on the interior of the conductor. Now, is it just negative charges in this induced charge distribution? Well, that depends on whether the conductor was charged up initially or not. If it were a neutral conductor and charge carriers moved to this side, then we would expect on the other side of the conductor to perhaps have positive charges where the field lines are emanating from those positive charges. And there might be points on the surface of the conductor where the field is zero. And so what we can say is that the sigma induced in general is non-uniform. And what it's doing is exactly canceling the external electric field in the metal of the conductor. And this process is something that we refer to as shielding. And that's our first look at what happens to the charges. What's important here is that the free charge carriers are on the boundary on the surface of the conductor. We've talked about using conductors as shields when we have charges on the external, in the external world. Let's look at what would happen so let's draw our hollow conductor where the electric field is zero inside the metal. And this is hollow. But what would happen if we placed a charge on the interior of in this hollow space inside the conductor? Well, we know that there is going to be some electric field from this charge, and it will attract negative charges towards it. So what we'll expect to see is on this inner part here, a negative distribution of charges, and maybe it distributes itself there. If those were electrons moving from the outside, that would leave a residual positive distribution on the outside of the conductor. And so what we have is now a sigma-induced, and I'll write outer, and that's on that surface. And then separately, on the interior, we have a sigma induced in the inner surface. And what's going on now is that the sigma interior is going to exactly cancel and shield the external world from this electric field of the positive charge. And so um, that will produce the electric field zero inside the conductor because of electrons have moved inside, say it was a neutral conductor at first, there's positive charges on the outside, and they'll just distribute themselves according to the geometry of the outside conductor, because 
as far as those charges are concerned, they experience no electric force from the inside. The only fo electric forces on those conductors are coming from the outer surface charges. They move around until they reach electrostatic equilibrium, and that depends on the geometry of the object. Now, we can ask the question, what is the total charge? So this is the total induced charge on the inner conductor. And that has to be an integral of this non-uniform charge density over the inner surface. And at first, this looks like a very intractable problem because we have this Q and these charges are moving around and the geometry of the object is complicated. But once again, Gauss's law to the rescue. So let's draw that picture and let's draw plus Q and also put in our minus charges that have been induced here on the inside, more over here than the other side. E in the metal is zero. And now I can pick a Gaussian surface. So I'll just draw my Gaussian surface. Those aren't negative charges. That's my Gaussian surface. And on that Gaussian surface, E dot dA on the Gaussian surface, this is zero because we're in, the Gaussian surface has been chosen inside the conductor. And that's equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. And the charge enclosed is plus Q, that's clearly inside the Gaussian surface, plus Q inner induced total, that integral. And because those are zero, we see that what's happened is the induced inner charge is equal to minus Q. So if there's a plus Q on the inside, minus Q moves into the inner surface, and the charge on, let's say our conductor started with Q total on the conductor is equal to Q naught. We know by charge conservation that Q naught is equal to Q inner induced plus Q outer induced. And so we can conclude that the charge on the outer surface induced, which is an integral, another intractable integral over the outer surface of sigma, this is the inner, this is outer induced dA. Well, we can see that it's just equal to whatever charge you started on that conductor, if it were neutral, it would be zero, whatever charge you started minus how much charge has moved to the inner surface of the conductor. And that's just charge conservation. So in effect, we're the outer world is being screened from the inner world there is some reflection because the minus charge that went to this, canceled this field, shows up in the outer world as a positive charge distributed over the surface. So the outer world does know, can't tell if there's something on the inside or we have a conductor that just has this surface charge on it. It has no idea how to distinguish between those two cases. Let's consider our conductor that's spherical with a very non-symmetric hollow chamber. Now, inside this conductor, we're going to put a positive charge Q. And one of the issues that we've said is that the surface of a conductor, the material of the conductor, is an equipotential. Now, this is sometimes confusing to students because we know if we have a positive Q here, and we'll just indicate that that's positive, then um, charges will separate in the conductor, and there'll be negative charges in the inner surface of the conductor that will be distributed very non-uniformly because this is a non-symmetric configuration. And what we said was 
that we had a sigma induced and that was inner. And because the conductor is symmetric, we have a symmetrically distributed amount of charge. And we know that the total charge on the inner one, if we integrated that, would be minus Q. And so we're having a charge plus Q that's symmetrically distributed along the outside. And let's just indicate that the radius of this is R. Then we know that the potential difference between R and infinity, well, this is just a uniformly distributed sphere, which we've calculated earlier, and that's just our constant K Q over R. And again, we'll usually choose our potential difference at infinity to be zero. So now this is the potential, not just at the radius r, but this is everywhere in the material of the conductor. And that's the statement that the conductor is an equipotential with this value kq over r. This is often very confusing because we have this inner charge density and we have a uniform outer charge density. We can just write sigma induced outer. This one is uniform. And students find it very confusing that the whole material of the conductor can be an equipotential with these different charges located on the surface. Let's explore that by considering a path from the inner to the outer. We'll call this point A, and this point B is on the outer surface. And we know this is the potential at B on the outer, anywhere on the outer surface. And if we were to calculate the potential difference, recall that the difference between B and A is the integral from A to B of E dot ds. And here, let's just indicate that we're going from A to B. Now, here's the important point. We know that experimentally, the electric field in the material of the conductor is 0. And therefore, this integral is 0. And so you see that the potential difference at every point inside the material of the conductor is the same. And we've calculated it as kq over r. And that's the important point to think about, that the, the conductor itself is an equipotential. Every point has the same value of the electric potential.